Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, now we are going to meditate God's word. Today is our sermon preaching by Ben. Before hearing the God's word, shall we bow down our head and pray unto God? Come on. Close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we are coming before you through your only begotten son Jesus thanks for this wonderful time to meditate your word to listen your voice it's a great privilege in our life lord thanks for all your blessings your protection your favor your mercy everything you have shown in our life thanks again and again lord even though we were unworthy you showed your greatest blessings in our life father god this is the time of meditating your word lord your servant is going to share god's word to us we open our heart lord we humble ourselves before you we need your voice lord your word has power let that power change ourselves cleanse us make us holy bless us fill our hearts with all your comforts we surrender and submit ourselves in you we are expecting a great wonderful things from you lord you are the prayer answering god you are living and loving god thanks for understanding our hearts and accepting our prayer thanks you are going to do a marvelous things in our life through today's sermon thank you lord the name of jesus we pray amen and amen amen praise the lord i welcome you all in the master's name of the lord and savior jesus christ today is a good day and i am glad that you are able to join us today to explore the word of god and to know more about him the question today is how do we impress god how do we please god is there a way is it a possibility to actually please him to find that answer i would want to start with a small life incident real life incident that i happened to me See as soon as I finished my 10th standard exams I had only one goal in my mind and that is to somehow get into Christ Junior College Bengaluru You see I had the, I had the marks I had the desire and I had all the ability to study there However the only thing that I did not have was the money The fees was quite expensive for us at that time to pay I tried getting in touch with people i tried contacts i tried influences however it all went in vain i could not go in one night as i was going to sleep my father came to me and he told me ben i've tried my best i've tried all the ways that i can to get you in into that college but it is just impossible for me to take that burden that night i was broken hearted i was discouraged i lost hope i did not have any idea what to do i went to bed i went to sleep i tried to sleep at night however i wasn't able to sleep because there were a couple of thoughts that was coming into my mind and one of the thought was ben just forget about it stop dreaming you cannot get into that college just forget about it move on however i had another thought in my mind 
what if what if there is a miracle that can happen you know logically my mind started to think it is just impossible ben in reality you can't do it but somewhere in my mind i had another thought that said all my life i have seen miracles that god has been doing i have believed i have heard about stories where god has done miraculous things why doesn't why don't he do a miracle in my life i went to sleep with that decision with that little bit of faith dear people of god what happened the next day changed my life changed the view that i have on my life i woke up to the sound the joyous sound of my parents i went to their room and i was like what is happening why are you guys so happy and they tell me ben we can get you in that into that college and i'm like how we don't have the money and they're like we've got it and i'm like how how is that even possible yesterday night we did not have it now how do we have the money so he told me that a family friend of ours visited us early in the morning he gave that money and he specifically told my father to spend it for ben's study purposes my father was surprised and excited at the same time and he asked why are you doing this and this friend of ours he told god asked me to do it god asked me to do it dear people of god it is a real life incident that happened in my life to be honest from that day i changed my perspective i started possessing the power called as faith so many people in my life my friends my colleagues have asked me how is that you are always optimistic even in the worst of the scenarios even in the worst of times how is that there is positivity in you i say let me tell you about this power that i have it's called faith believe me when i say this faith has helped me overcome a lot of things in my life a lot of issues honestly speaking you can testify that you have overcome a lot of issues in your life a lot of problems a lot of days of crying because of faith faith is a power that has been given to us christians we tend to talk about love we tend to talk about patience we tend to talk about holiness a lot but we should remember to give faith as much as importance we give to anything else there is a proverb in english it says it goes as this time heals all pain time heals all pain it is true i believe that time heals all pain however i want to add that time heals all pain however faith helps you overcome it faith helps you overcome any pain in our life dear people of god today i want to explore what faith is i want you to understand how this power can be possessed by you i want you to start living a better life with this amazing weapon that god has given to you and me faith let's drop in all right so my title for this sermon is how to impress god this is such a vague question however the bible has a very clear answer for it hebrews 11 verse 6 chapter 11 verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please god it's clear it's concise without faith it is impossible to please god there is such an importance that is given to faith here faith takes the center stand the center stage without faith god is not impressed with whatever we do in fact hebrews chapter 10 verses 38 says if you draw away from faith god is not going to have any pleasure in that person if we move away from faith if we move away from the faith that we possess god is not going to be pleased with whatever we do all the prayer that we do all the meditation that we do all the money that we give all the offerings that we give he's not going to be impressed with any of it he's not going to be pleased with any of it if you have no faith if you move away from faith dear people of god it is important to exercise your faith as a christian as a human being it is important to show your faith 
to God. See, faith can be defined properly, and the Bible gives it an amazing definition. Hebrews chapter eleven verses one defines as. Faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. There are two things that is very important right here. Two words, substance, and the other one is evidence. So, what exactly is substance, dear people of God? Substance comes from the Greek word hypostasis, which means foundation. However, in other parts of the New Testament, we can see that this meaning is, uh, this word is meant as confidence. confidence so when we say substance in in the things hoped for the bible meaning means that you have confidence in the things you hope for the second word is evidence evidence is as we all know it's nothing but proof even though there is no evidence of the things that cannot be seen there is no evidence of the future and still when we possess confidence on the things that we hope for that is faith dear people of god i am requesting your attention here faith is nothing but you have hope on a, on something in the future and you have confidence that that thing is going to happen even though there is no proof see that is what is happening these days with this coronavirus that is going on around people are volunteering to get themselves to get injected with antibodies that would fight coronavirus see they hope it works they have confidence that it will work even though there is no proof that is exercising faith missionaries wanted to come to india wanted to preach the word of god to the people of india they had no proof whether or not it will work they had no proof whether or not they will be alive and yet they had confidence in the fact that they can start preaching the word of god in india they came they exercised faith dear people of god ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 says faith is a gift that has been given to all of us nobody in the world can say that we do not have faith every time we sit on a chair we exercise our faith we hope that the chair doesn't break everyone in the world has faith and today as christians we must understand that this faith is in all of us dear people of god there is one question that i want to arise right now god is a good god a god our god is an awesome god he is a great god however he is also a perfect god on the other hand human beings like you and me we are not perfect we are sinful beings we have fallen down we have messed up so the bible says that we imperfect people like you and me can impress can please a perfect god today i want to take you through three imperfect things that is associated with human beings three imperfect things that shows that we are completely away from god and yet when we show our faith he is impressed let's move on hallelujah so first and foremost irrespective of our sinfulness irrespective of our sinfulness we can impress our god we can please our god irrespective of our sinfulness see just as i told you human beings are not perfect of course we are all sinful beings all the disasters that is happening in the world all the tragedy that has happened in our life is one or the other way related to the sins that we have all committed as the word of god however says christ died for you and me even while we were sinners even while we were sinners jesus christ died for you and me except for jesus christ everybody of us are sinners we have taken wrong decisions we have messed up in our life we have failed however let me remind you dear people of god god is still impressed with our faith god knew that we are not the best of our kind god knew that we will fail god knew that we will not become like jesus ever 
and still when we show a little bit of faith he is impressed by us see dear people of god let me carry your attention to romans when paul writes his letters to romans he makes it clear one particular point to both jews and gentiles he says jews and gentiles there is no difference anymore we are all the same and the reason why he says that is because there is a trend there was a trend in the roman church there was a practice in the roman church where the jewish people who got converted into christianity even though they believed in jesus they still believed in the fact that just because they are descendants of abraham just because they are jews they believe that they are not sinners they looked at everyone else and thought that they were better just because they were jews they thought they will achieve eternity they will have salvation but jesus refuted everything these jews people wanted the gentiles who were becoming christians to believe in jesus yes but at the same time be circumcised and at the same time follow the law that was given to us by moses it is not true jesus christ did not say all of that jesus christ said if you have to be saved just believe in me so when paul writes to jews and the gentiles he says there is no difference between you guys all of us are sinners not because you are jews or descendants of abraham let's talk about abraham dear people of god abraham is called the father of faith amen to that abraham is called a friend of god amen to that however let us not forget that abraham is like you and me a normal human being which means he is also a sinner the bible does not stay away or shy away from calling abraham also and showing to us that abraham is also a sinner dear people of god genesis chapter 12 talks about this a sin that he committed a lie that he told to pharaoh he is in egypt with his wife sarah and his wife is one of the most beautiful person at in at that time in that place she was so attractive that people that men over there wanted to live their life with her just out of fear abraham looks at pharaoh and says sarah is not my wife sarah is my sister a lie a sin abraham said it on the other hand we also see god promising abraham for a descendants for all uh, for a new generation he promised for a new uh, for a son instead of waiting abraham and sarah took uh, took the issue in their own hands and abraham had a baby with hagar and we know what happened we know the consequences see dear people of god let's not forget that god forgives our sins but the consequences of the sins will always be there we have to go through it and abraham went through it however even though he was sinner he was still called the father of faith and the reason is this dear people of god even though he was a sinner when god tested his faith he exercised his faith and showed that he was a faithful person god gave a son to abraham isaac and after some years god asks abraham to give isaac as a sacrifice and without hesitation without second thought abraham actually was ready to do it we know what happened we know god stopped at the nick of time however because of what abraham had done god was impressed because of how abraham showed his faith god was impressed dear people of god let me remind you this you and me we are sinners 
you and me we have fallen down from the glory of god however just like abraham when we exercise our faith when we show our faith to god he is pleased with us our god is pleased when we show our faith to him irrespective of our sinful nature irrespective of all the sins that we have committed in our lives when we show faith he is pleased with you and me amen hallelujah hallelujah okay let's move forward i start by saying irrespective of sinfulness he is impressed by our faith secondly irrespective of our behavior irrespective of our behavior god is impressed behavior bad behavior that we have god is still impressed with our faith see one of the things that i see in a lot of churches dear people of god these days any church any denomination i go imagine that the service is going on and the pastor is preaching and there is complete silence from the audience only the sound of the pastor you can listen he's going very serious very calm and suddenly out of nowhere you hear a baby cry from the audience what is the first reaction that we have we start looking around we're like who's who's baby is that who is that it's the same everywhere it's the same with mobile also when the word of god is being given when the pastor is preaching out of nowhere if you hear a ringtone we'd be like okay who who is that see listen to me this is a behavior that we have seen in all churches behavior is generally defined as the way in which a person acts oneself in response to a situation meaning if there is a situation and the way we act to that situation is defined as our behavior when a person sneezes into a handkerchief we look at him and say wow that's good behavior when the same person sneezes on our faces we look at him and say that's a bad behavior dear people of god what i'm trying to say is every human being how much ever good he is even if he has a good nature he or she may have bad behaviors when jesus christ was on the earth there were many instances in which people experienced breakthrough in their lives especially after they encountered jesus see the blind could see the deaf deaf could hear diseases were healed even sins were forgiven how have you ever noticed that almost always jesus christ says the same thing when he is healing people mark 1052 jesus looks at the blind man and he says your faith has made you whole luke chapter 17 verses 19 jesus talks to the 10 lepers and says your faith has healed you matthew 929 says jesus to the two blind men he looks at them and he's like your faith has made you whole however one of the story that i am impressed by fascinated by is in luke chapter 5 verses 18 to 20 Luke chapter 5 verses 18 to 20 it's a story of 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 men of a couple of men who carried a paralyzed man on his bed to Jesus see Jesus is in Galilee in a house and he's surrounded by by people by crowd that has come all the way from different places just to listen to him talk about the kingdom of god just to be be healed by him there is such a huge crowd that these people these men were not able to get that paralyzed man towards jesus christ so what did they do they took this guy on the bed they went to the roof of the house started removing the tiling slowly but steadily and then they after making a huge hole they lowered the guy who was on the bed the paralyzed man on the bed to jesus in the center of the house dear people of god there is a huge hole on the roof of the house and there's a man coming down who's being lowered a paralyzed man see 
let's take this instance and imagine us in that situation imagine you and me sitting and listening to jesus christ he's talking about the kingdom of god there is so much intense speech that he is giving and you're listening to it and suddenly out of nowhere you see dust falling on your head and in front of you around you people are confused and suddenly you see that the roof is starting to open up and you're even more confused and suddenly you see that there is a man on a bed a paralyzed man on a bed being brought down by men from the roof what would be your reaction what would be my reaction we would be like oh my god what kind of a behavior is this we will condone that behavior we'll be like are you thieves are you robbers dear people of god what did jesus do he looked at them instead of condoning instead of condemning he says in luke chapter 5 verses 20 he saw their faith and said man your sins are forgiven he forgave the sin of the paralyzed man and healed him because he was impressed by the faith of the men who brought him irrespective of our behavior dear people of god jesus christ is impressed when you show faith today let me tell you a lot of people would have called you in different names a lot of people would have discouraged you in your life the way you behave people would have called you you behave like a child you behave in a very nonsensical way people would have called you bad names people would have discouraged your behavior however let me tell you this god jesus christ is not impressed by what people say he is impressed when you show your faith to him he is pleased when you show your faith to him dear people of god irrespective of our sinfulness irrespective of our behavior god is still impressed with our faith let's move on finally there's only one more uh, point and i will finish this sermon as i told you dear people of god it is possible to impress god it is possible to please him irrespective of our sinful nature and irrespective of our behavior it is possible to please him finally irrespective of our situation irrespective of our situation we can please him whatever situation that we are going through we can still please him see luke chapter 23 verses 39 to 43 luke chapter 23 verses 39 to 43 there is an incident that is going on right there there are two thieves who are being crucified right next to jesus christ one thief looks at jesus christ and says if you are the true son of god why don't you do a miracle right now and get down from the cross he mocks at jesus how would there is another thief who has a different approach towards jesus christ he doesn't mock at jesus he looks at jesus christ and he says in luke 23:42 we read lord remember me when you come into your kingdom lord remember me when you come into your kingdom what is happening here is that this thief is confessing his faith he calls jesus as lord and he believes in the fact that there is going to be a kingdom and jesus christ is going to be the king he is showing his faith what happened to him how did he learn about jesus christ how did he come to know about all of this is not the question here i want you to be attentive on the fact by looking at the situation that this thief is currently in he is right next to jesus christ on a cross crucified so typically he is in a lot of pain physically he is in a lot of pain see i have read that this thief could have been a robber uh, a violent one imagine the situation in his life 
when you are a robber imagine the financial troubles that you'll have to go through when you are a robber imagine the relationship problems that you'll have to go through when you are a robber and also dear people of god i've read that these people who are crucified they also are made to carry that cross and walk on that road towards golgotha just like jesus did imagine the shame that he had to go through imagine the situation of this thief emotionally from all the sides all the corners of his life he is holistically going through a bad situation and even though he is in this type of situation he confesses to jesus about his faith he shows jesus his faith even though his situation is going down he shows jesus his faith and what do jesus do what does jesus do instead of talking about a situation instead of mocking him he looks at that thief and he says you will be today you will be in paradise with me jesus christ was pleased with the thief's faith dear people of god let's take this moment and think about ourselves today what are we in this world what are we doing in this world what are our situations in this world how's our family going how's our job going are we having satisfaction are we at peace we are sinful being it is true we have fallen down we are doing a lot of mistakes it is true our behavior are is bad people are mocking us people take advantage of us people make us cry we are going through a lot of issues our situations are not good at all but in midst of it let me encourage you dear people of god in midst of all of this just remember show a little bit of faith and god is going to be pleased with you show a little bit of faith and god is going to be impressed with you he will change your life when you show a little bit of faith let me just finish the sermon with a small proverb see in english there is this proverb that says there is always light by the end of the tunnel there is always light by the end of the tunnel it is true but let me remind you that the one thing that carries you through this dark tunnel towards the light is faith faith carries you through this dark tunnel of life towards the light and it is important don't worry about life dear people of god whatever happens don't be overwhelmed with whatever happening in your life let me tell you show a little bit of faith god will change your situations dear people of god let us close our eyes and let us give thanks to god for talking to us this morning and for giving us his word and for blessing us with his amazing grace let us close our eyes and thank god oh jesus christ we praise you lord we praise you father we praise you we praise you we love you lord jesus with a grateful heart we look to you lord jesus and thank you for all the good things that you have done in our life today lord jesus you have spoken to us through your word it is truly a privilege and honor to learn from your word of god today oh lord jesus you have taught us the importance of faith lord above all the things in the world oh lord jesus you have made us realize that faith is important lord we ask you lord jesus that you help us develop our faith strengthen our faith in our life oh lord jesus father being a perfect god oh lord jesus we are blessed to know that you are impressed and pleased by imper- imperfect people like us our faith is important to you father we thank you lord jesus even though we are sinful beings even though our behavior is bad and our situation is wrong 
you O lord jesus are still looking forward for us to exercise our faith we praise you and thank you for talking to us today lord jesus i pray that you bless each and every one of us who have heard your word you bless and take care of each and every one of us who listen to you lord jesus we praise you and thank you because you are a true god who is our father who is closer to us than our brother lead us to the light lead us through darkness in jesus precious name we all pray amen 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 hallelujah 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 thank you so much for joining us today and until we see next time let's let god's blessing be upon each and every one of us amen amen and amen